Hey everyone, let's have a quick chat about the watchmaker of the Ligri Street. This book came into my life with the words favorite, steampunk, and look at the cover. If that doesn't scream a Wiebke book, I don't know what does. However, it turned out not to be for me. I really struggled from the beginning and I'm actually regretting not DNFing the book. The book follows mainly three characters. The first character we meet, I completely didn't understand why they have the name they have, just to insert three jokes about it. It didn't make any sense. Just name your character differently. The second main character we meet is the female main character who was so dislikable from the first moment being like, I'm not like everybody, I'm superior, I'm so much smarter and looking down on everyone. And the third main character feels like a side character because we don't see things really from his perspective. But he's a huge part of the story. And there we come to the next point. I don't really know what the story of this wants to be. We are in 1880s London and there has been an explosion, a bomb threat in the beginning, then the bomb exploded. And the main character we meet in the beginning, he's a clerk in the home office, starts or gets saved by a watch. So he follows the watch along and finds the watchmaker. He's a third quiet character. And starts moving in because one of the Scotland Yard people thinks he might be the bomb maker. So of course a clerk from the home office has to move in there. As you can see it's already a little bit shady from the beginning but those two characters are actually the best part of the book. The relationship they have, the interactions they have, how they talk to each other, how they engage and what happens around them. That's rather interesting. There is still in the background some mystery solving with who put the bomb there, who was the bomb maker, was it the watchmaker, was it someone else. On top of that, the watchmaker is a Japanese immigrant. So we also visit a Japanese village that is an exhibition in Hyde Park at the same time. Now, I'm usually not one for checking historical facts, but because this book really doesn't have much going for it, I was like, maybe it's historical fiction more than steampunk. So I looked up the explosion that was in May 1883, but the Japanese village was from 1885 to 1887. So that didn't make any sense. But anyways, I guess she wanted to have the Japanese character. The woman who was studying in Oxford had to come back to London because the semester ended. Her best friend is, for whatever reason, a Japanese dandy. <laughs> that didn't really make any sense either. Not the way they interacted at all for it being the Victorian times. But whatever. Steampunk can have a little bit of freedom. But there wasn't that much steampunk either. Because the steampunk we have was that the watchmaker made little clockwork things. But they could have been left out or recognized or talked about or been more of whatever. So there is a lot of devices that sound cute, but the story doesn't really make sense. And especially what really, really irked me the wrong way is the woman. The woman starts meeting the clerk and then because they get along and she needs someone to marry because she wants to inherit a house where she wants to put the laboratory in but her father wouldn't give it to her so she needs to have a husband so she's basically using him majorly. But then she gets angry totally at his friendship with the watchmaker and ruins everything and in the end she doesn't really get her comeuppance but gets rewarded for being I'm thinking of a lot of not nice words right now. So basically she ruins everything. She's very mean and hurtful and selfish all the time and not considerate of her future husband or then husband or whatever. And it's just, <clears throat> this might be a little bit spoilery. I should have said that before, but I've tried to keep the spoilers low. I actually don't recommend anyone read this book. There's been a lot of people who enjoyed the book and raved about it. I felt wrong about this from the beginning. And also the Japanese parts or the inclusion of Japanese characters feels kind of off. It doesn't really feel right. It always said mm, in my stomach. So I don't really know. I can't put my finger on exact things. I just felt it all was very stereotypical. It was all, yeah, a jumble of things that weren't really put well together. 
in the end. And I still don't know what the novel wants to tell me. It doesn't really have a proper plot. It doesn't really have a proper story. Nothing to put your fingers on, nothing to latch on, nothing to enjoy. So I don't know what other people like about this book so much. Most of the good reviews say like, oh, great on a reread every time. And I'm just like, why would I want to read that again? enough rambling about the book. Let me know in comments if you've read it, if you liked it, what you liked about it, especially what you liked it if you liked it. And yeah, if you had ever planned to read that and if I discouraged you, I'm sorry, but I really don't recommend it. Thank you all for watching. Let's talk in comments. Bye-bye.